You know, I do these videos, I'm very honest about the successes and the failures. And I, I have to say, this is a failure. This is a mortality. Um, it happens, guys. Um, I try and be as truthful with everything here at the camp as possible. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennet. This week's shout out goes to Adrian Pickle. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. What's up guys? So I was gonna do a video. Um, we had a sick tortoise turtle terrapin here, Royal River Terrapin, and I came out, was ready to do an injection, its third injection, and sadly the animal is gone. Um, this is the one that we have been treating with the acroflavin. We got the fungus removed. I put it back in the pond. I noticed he was listing to one side. He was floating on one side. And that usually means there's a respiratory problem. So I called my good friend and vet, uh, Dr. Mike Gillum from PGA Animal Clinic here in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And he sent home, sent me with a bunch of uh, antibiotic called septazidine. And uh, you're to inject the animal every 72 hours with this particular um, uh, antibiotic. So this morning, you know, I noticed the animal still wasn't doing so well. Um, I put, I drained the water out because, um, you know, they defecate in the water and so on. Um, I just noticed he was just not doing well, so I was nervous, but I thought we could turn him around. I wanted to dry him out a little bit because they do like to bask, so I thought, hey, let's dry him out, relax, and um, I, like I said, I just came here to do this video and He's already gone, and um, I know this because, you know, he's you know he's just not moving, um, and so it's very sad. Uh, this this animal is very old. Um, this animal was an adult when it was brought into the United States in the late 1980s. Uh, this is an animal that was uh, part of uh, the zoological community. Uh, all the Badiger were actually, they are uh, loaned animals here. And uh, sadly, um, now I only have a male and a female left. This was a male, and uh, now I have 1.1. 1 .1. And we're going to walk over and we're going to go to the uh, Aquascape Ecosystem Pond where they're living, and we're going to check them out. Um, they are both behaving and acting normally. This one was acting strange for a little while. That's why I pulled him out. Uh, you know, like I said, um, he had some injuries to his flippers here, um, but we were able to clear up the fungus. But what, what this tells me is that there was something more sinister uh, happening inside his body. And I was concerned uh, that he might have some sepsis going on. Um, uh, you know, and sepsis can get systemic. Uh, and it's basically an infection in the blood. Once it gets to that level, it's very difficult without aggressive, aggressive treatment. And that's what I was doing here today. So this is a shame. Um, working with animals is tough, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and walk on out and go see what's happening in the pond. Um, you know, I do these videos. I'm very honest about the successes and the failures. And I, I have to say, this is a failure. This is a mortality. Um, it happens, guys. Um, I try and be as truthful with everything here at the camp as possible. I want you guys to get a good idea of the successes and the failures and the heartbreak that we deal with here. Um, so much about these animals uh, and keeping these animals relies on the husbandry. And as you can see, the husbandry is amazing. But that being said, being that even though we live in South Florida and it is primarily a very agreeable um, climate for these animals, if an animal is dealing with something that you can't see immediately and the weather changes like we've had in the last month, um, we've had some nights that got into the 40s already. If, if that animal was already dealing with something like an infection, a skin infection, and his 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 you know white blood cells his defense mechanism his immune system is working overtime to help him with that well you add in a climactic change he's not at full strength and now we have a respiratory infection a secondary infection so now his body goes to fighting that and maybe he got inf some infections from those wounds on his flippers um it's all guesswork 
Uh, unfortunately, that elm was gone. And what I want to do is we've got another camera. We're going to dip in. I want to see the male. I can see the male, another male swimming around. Um, so this is how you know an animal is healthy. It's moving around, it's eating. Um, what's shocking is that male the one that passed away was eating just yesterday, which usually is a good indication the animal's doing well. But, um, you know, usually when a reptile gets sick, it stops eating. So this is extremely confounding, man. It's it, so many times, you know, you're just left wondering what happened, you know? Um, I could potentially bring that animal to my buddy Mike, the, the vet, um, and have him do a necropsy on it, or maybe some blood tests, just so we know. Um, it's always good if you can afford to do that or if you have a friend like Mike uh, that can help you with that. It's very important because it'll take away a lot of the guesswork because, you know, maybe there was something going on in here. Like I said, remember, we did do the video where I added a whole bunch of salt to this water. And I got to tell you, the other Badiger are doing amazing. The Fly River Turtles doing amazing. We've actually added a third Fly River Turtle that came from my friend Larry Wood, who is a doctor of marine biology. If you guys were a member of my Patreon, you would have seen the live video we did uh, on Patreon where we added that animal to this habitat. Um, so all the other animals in here are doing well. I'm not noticing anything funky going on with the fish or some of the other badiger. Um, you know, the fungus can happen from time to time, but very rarely um, does that become systemic. Um, but who knows? It, that could have been the problem too. Uh, so we'll see. We've attacked the other uh, problems with the other tor turtles uh, just as a preventative thing. But with reptiles, you don't want to leave uh, any kind of problem, you know, to be uh, completely uh, ignored, okay? Because what will happen is, um, Reptiles are kind of mysteries, you know, they aren't exactly animals that will bark or let you know that they're being, uh, that they're sick. They, they stop their behavior, their behavior changes, and that's why it's so important for you to pay attention to your animals. Um, as soon as I notice behavior changes in my animals, I pull, up, pull the animal out, I get them uh, into a, um, a situation where they're actually in a hospital tank. Um, we were talking about the new fly river turtle. Here it is, a much smaller fly river turtle that was living with my buddy um, Larry Wood, who is a marine sea turtle expert. And he loves fly river turtles because of course, they do look like a sea turtle because they have those flippers uh, instead of paddle-like feet and they swim just like a sea turtle. So for him, that was, you know, the, the turtle he always wanted. So I was able to give it to him. He brought it back to me because it was getting too large uh, for the tub he had it in and he wanted the animal to have a very good life. But, um, you know, it's just sad. Now I'm down to these two um, Badiger affinis, the Royal River Terrapin. Um, I'm going to have to keep a good eye on them. We're also going to be doing some work here before February. I'm going to get a load of beach sand and let me show you where I'm going to put it. I want to show you what we're going to do with the beach sand because we've been getting eggs from this female every year, but she's been depositing the eggs in the water uh, right over here. Check it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a whole big pile just a mound of beach sand and kind of spread it out in this area, guys. I want there to be a beach and she'll be able to climb up this rock. She'll be attracted to the beach and that's where she's gonna wanna lay her eggs because now more than ever, it is crucial that we get offspring from this female and this male. Um, I don't want these guys to, to not reproduce here at the camp, uh, especially since we have lost one. Give me one second, we're gonna just silence this real quick. Um, but, but yeah, guys, it's a, uh, it's a bummer, but we're going to aggressively, um, get on the ability for these animals to reproduce properly here in captivity, uh, at the camp. And I think this would be, this, this makes the most sense. It's the best and easiest place for us to make a beach. Okay. So she'll come out and I've said this before about this species, this species actually is an amazing turtle. They live way up in Southeast Asia and basically upriver. But when they go to lay their eggs, they swim downstream, they exit the mouth of the river into a saltwater body, 
swim and lay their eggs right on the same beaches that sea turtles lay their eggs on. The babies hatch, they swim into the ocean, and then find their way into the mouth of the river where they join the adults and then grow up upstream. Really incredible, which is why they're called the Royal River Terrapin, because a terrapin, uh, in North America, we consider a terrapin a turtle that lives in salt and fresh water or brackish water, which is a mix of the two. So that's what terrapin means here in the United States. Uh, and tortoise, of course, lives on land. And turtle is a semi-aquatic freshwater uh, chelonian, which is the term that we use for all shelled reptiles, turtles, tortoises, and terrapins. But over here, guys, you can just see, um, this will be pretty cool. So she'll swim out. She'll climb up here, we'll have the soil, and of course, I'll do a video with this, but we'll have my buddy with his bobcat dump a bunch of the soil, we'll mound it up a little bit, I'll shape it, and this will show her she's now got a good beach to lay her eggs instead of depositing them into the water, okay? Because I find them too late. What happens is some of the fly river turtles grab onto the eggs and eat them. So I'm only finding the egg shells, which is a bummer. I want these guys, we'll put them in, we'll incubate them. I have a friend of mine, Bill Ninesling. He has produced Batiger affinis many times. Um, maybe we'll look to acquiring some juvenile Batiger affinis from him, uh, just so we can keep this amazing species here at the camp. So definitely a bummer, guys. I'm uh, certainly not happy with what happened, but I just want you guys to know that it's not always a success here. And there are lessons in failure, and we've got to take heed of those lessons. Uh, and each species of turtle is different. And each mortality, each death has a lesson. What could I have done different? Um, was it just the fact this was an old animal? This animal was very old and maybe its immune system was already uh, depleted because of age. Now we know turtles and tortoises can live a long time, but they do in fact senesce, which means senescence is a term for aging and that means they die um, so who knows but what I can tell you is that we actually tried so as reptile keepers it's important for us to learn from these lessons death can teach us so much and when you're keeping a large amount of animals you're gonna encounter it so you have to know and be prepared that being said guys we must do everything we can to give these animals the best life possible and that's certainly what I try to do here at the camp. And unfortunately, sometimes things are just out of my control. So you have to forgive yourself and you have to keep moving forward. And that's what we're gonna do here at the camp. We're gonna keep moving forward and my new renewed interest in breeding these animals is gonna take shape and hopefully we'll get some viable eggs this winter from our Royal River Terrapins so we can replenish the stock here at the camp. Thanks so much guys for watching this and uh, we'll be back with more videos really, really soon. I appreciate each and every one of your support and we'll see you again real soon.